Good morning everyone, welcome back to another video here from the Off Grid Garage in Australia. Today we are going to do a full capacity test on this lithium iron phosphate battery. But it's not so much to test the battery out of in terms of quality and capacity, it's more testing the software and actually get a good understanding of the charge and discharge curve of this lithium iron phosphate chemistry in general. So I have already started the tester. So we have now pulled half an ampere hour out of this 100 ampere hour battery. And it took one minute and 40 seconds. So we are now one ampere hour into the test. So we have discharged 1% of this battery with 100 ampere hours. And we can see how beautiful this curve builds up at the beginning here, starting from 3.65 volts and quickly going down. And we are doing the 20 amp discharge test because this is as per standard for testing batteries. It is 20% of the nominal capacity. 100 ampere hours is 100%. So 20% is 20 ampere hours or 20 amps to discharge with. That's why I have chosen the 100 ampere hour battery and not a 120 or an 80 ampere hour battery. I thought the 100 ampere hour battery is so much easier to calculate with. Okay, let's do a time lapse and check in after a while. Hopefully the computer keeps recording here and we can see a result at the end uh, in five hours. This will be at about 5 p.m. then. Have a great afternoon. Guys, this is pretty amazing. We are five hours into the test and the battery is at 3.1 volts. We have already discharged 101 ampere hour and it is still going. This battery cell exceeds my expectations by a lot. It was at about 70 ampere hours at 3.19 volts. And I said, well, it will never make it to 100 ampere hours. Definitely not. But look at this, has exceeded the expectations and it is still going. All right, let's continue our test. Okay, we are now coming quickly to a end of our test here. 2.56 volts we are, still discharging. But the tester will cut off the discharge test every second. 2.54. And now it's going really down. Look at this, how quickly it goes down. And we have reached 2.5 volts right now. One more. Oh. Why do we see a voltage increase now? Ah, the tester has turned off. Okay, that's it. Zero amps. I didn't look at the amps at the top, but at the top right corner. So zero amps. And of course, as soon as you take the load away, the voltage will increase again. So, well, here's our discharge curve of this cell. Firstly, I'm super impressed with this battery cell. Look at this result down here. We are we were able to discharge the battery with 110 ampere hours for a rated 100 ampere hours. So 10% more capacity. That is a lot. That is super nice. We can actually press the right mouse button on the curve and it gives you information about how much ampere hours we have discharged at exactly this point. This is 3.257 volts. This is where the flat area of the curve started. And at this point of time, we have discharged the battery with 1.6 ampere hours only. So from here until 3.65 is only 1.6%. And then we have a very, very flat curve until about, I would say about here somewhere. 3.188 volt. This is at 77% of capacity, 77 ampere hours. And from here it goes down 
80-85%. There is 90%, 3.15 volts. This is 90% of the capacity. So if we go all the way down to 3.1 volts, which is exactly here, we've got 101 ampere hours discharged from this battery cell here. And then you can see from here until the end, this is another 10%, another 9% of capacity. Yeah, so around 3.1 volt, this should be your lowest discharge and you get almost 100% capacity out of it. So if you discharge your battery cell from 3.25 volt all the way down to 3.1 volt, you're getting almost 90% of the capacity of your battery cell. Okay, now let's do the opposite and charge the battery fully to 3.65 volts. So charging constant voltage and we go here to 5 amps and our maximum will be 3.65 volts. Cut off current will then be 1 amps. All right. Here we go. Charging right now. And we can see the graph is coming up. The red line is the current, blue line is the voltage. So guys, this test may take about 20 hours now. We've got only 5 amp charging current. And it's 110 ampere hour battery, so it, it will be actually 21 hours, is that correct? And we measure the cell temperature as well, 24.1 degree. If you're still using Fahrenheit, it's 75.3 Fahrenheit. So we are very well in the standard test condition for discharging a lithium iron phosphate battery and we're getting 10% more capacity. That is impressive. Well, this whole video is actually about the battery tester and the software and getting the graph on the screen, you know, a standard discharge graph for the lithium iron phosphate battery. The tester didn't get warm at all, even at 20 amps discharge. You could feel a little bit warm air coming out of here, but, but this was maybe like 30 degrees or so. That was all. And the actual metal case was nice and cool throughout the test. So there was no issue at all with the tester itself. The software runs stable. So this is all working perfectly fine. I'm impressed with this tester actually. I'm, I really like it. It's nice. The next day. All right. I'm just playing around with this amazing software here. Okay, let's have a quick look at our charge and discharge curves and see what the specialties are. And this is what the CSV file is for when you export it after you've done your testing. You can actually import it later on again and you've got all the information there, all the data, everything is there. So this is our discharge curve. See at the bottom left you can also have the parameters there uh, 3.56 was our begin voltage and 2.5 cut off 110.65 ampere hours out of this battery cell. Amazing. I like it. 352 watt hours, a third of a kilowatt hour in this little block. That is quite amazing. So we're coming all the way high up and falling down quickly. So if we do the right mouse here, we should be able to... Uh, 3.25 volts it is after 1.6 ampere hours and then it goes all the way flat 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 until I would say here this is 3.18 this is after 83 ampere hours discharged already so 3.1 3.1 there we go well this is 90% 90% capacity right 101 ampere hours out of 110 there's only 9 ampere hours missing. And if you go further down to 3 volts. Ooh, I like this one. Look how it jumps over. Because we are coming close to the graph. I like this software. Uh, 3. Uh, there's no point. Okay, let's call it here. 106. There's only another 5 ampere hours. So from 3.1. 2 or 3 volt is 6 ampere hours, 6%, 5% or something. 
so it's not worth doing it unless you are in need of course if this is an electric vehicle and you need to get to the next charger and you are so close then you can discharge a little bit further but uh, as a home storage there should be no need to discharge that low so call it at 3.1 i would say and you still got 90% um, of the capacity done let's do the same for the charge curve and see what we can see um, and here we need open data uh, charge curve colors fine there's our charge curve how good is that so we're coming from the basement here all the way up up until here uh, 3.24 volts we have yeah and then it goes a little bit flatter and then we have another incline here until here this is like 30 ampere hours into the charge cycle and then this is what I've seen so many times you're charging and charging and charging and the voltage just keeps the same constant voltage it's insane there's no voltage incline there's no voltage rise at all nothing 3.326 volts here and goes up very very slowly up until here and 3.37 that's the magic 3.37 we are at 72 percent state of charge then already and look at this 72 Look at the voltage, 3.37. From 72 up to 94%, no voltage increase, nothing. It stays the same, 3.37. So how can you know where to stop charging if you want to stop charging at 80%? Because 80% is right in the middle, right here somewhere. See, this would be around 80 ampere hours, around 80%. This is the same voltage as 72 percent state of charge and the same voltage as 94 percent state of charge how do you how do you stop at 80 percent that is impossible with these batteries that is impossible and then ah actually hang on i saw something in the manual for this software we can actually um ah, look at this zoom in a little bit huh into this graph here and we're already at 97 ampere hours where's 3.4 where do we get to 3.4 oh this is all the way 3.399 there 3.4 107 ampere hours out of 109 so this is like 99.5 percent state of charge already at 3.4 so I was I'm wondering why do we actually keep charging at this point of time then there's there's no gain of of um, capacity at 3.4 volts if we charge further we are only increasing the voltage so I don't really understand why we are doing that but I will find out with the help of this setup here we can now find out what is going on so if we call it here we've got 90% state of charge reached charge curve of course and then I would like to know how much capacity do we actually have from this point discharging to say 3.1 volts. How much does it give us? And then the next test would be charging to this point again, but then absorb. Let the battery absorb until the current goes to zero. How much more capacity would we gain without increasing the voltage? So these are some of the tests I would like to do with the software here and get some nice graphs and actually understand what is happening if we absorb, if we don't absorb, if we charge to a lower voltage like this one or if we charge to a higher voltage like 3.5. At the moment my charge controller sits on 3.5 volts per cell and then it calls it and then it goes down to float. But do we actually need to charge that high? This is not for gaining capacity or something. And I still don't quite understand why we should do this to charge that high. I'll find out. Yeah, very, very nice. This was a very long test now. The charge and discharge cycle of this 100 ampere hour lithium iron phosphate battery cell. Well, it was like 20 hours, dis no, 22 hours discharging because we had 110 ampere hours 
out of the battery and then plus another five five and a half hours charging no the other way around so there was 27 27 hours for a full cycle charging and that's why i have ordered the bigger brother of this device here which unfortunately can handle only single cells we cannot charge battery we cannot charge batteries which we have built this one goes only from zero to five volts or something so only cell based capacity tester but same software just with 40 amps charging and discharging well this one here again does only 5 amps charging and 20 amps discharging but i think it's totally fine for th for this test purposes here it's totally fine i like it yeah guys all right so far this cycle and charge and discharge test of this battery cell here i'm really impressed with this tester and the software of course i like these curves and i like you can actually open these graphs later on again and actually analyze your test environment again yeah guys if you want to see some specific tests here with this battery and this setup let me know in the comments down below i'm more than happy to undertake these tests here and and then see what the outcomes are and learn from that um, i have i have saved now the graph here of the charge and discharge curve and we will put these uh, graphics onto my website as well so if you want to download them for and want to print them out or just want to study them uh, feel free to download these graphics they are free of charge of course you can't really find many good graphs out there for lithium iron phosphate batteries and some of them are even copyrighted and everything these ones are totally free if you want to use them commercially yep knock yourself out you can also just print them in color and put them in your living room <laughs> your wife will love it Okay guys, so far this video from today again. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here on the channel. Thanks for all your beer donations. And stay charged, stay safe. And we shall see us again in the next video coming out very soon. Okay guys, thanks again. See you then. Bye bye.